Hey everyone, this is Vicki from Messy Table Studio here on behalf of my creative year for the monthly prompt of figures for the month of February. So, as many of you know, I'm more a doodler than I am a mixed media journaler. And so, guess what this is about? <laughs> All right, so I had a question about I started doing mandalas because of some stuff that I saw my sister-in-law doing with gel pens. So I had to figure out a way to make it easier for me because I cannot draw a circle, a nice looking circle to save my life. So I contacted my friend Michelle Mitchell and she told me the name of a piece of equipment, a tool that would work perfectly for what I want. I can't find any way to show this where it looks good. Um, so, oh wait, let me try this. Is that any better? Well, crud, no. Anyway, so she told me about this thing, and it's called a Helix. And it comes in packaging like this, and I've already, I've had it for a couple weeks now. Comes like that with the blister pack on it. And then at the, on the back, it tells you how to use it. So don't throw the card away when you open it up. If you're a beginner like I am, don't throw this away. This will really be helpful for the learning curve on how to use this. All right, so what a helix does is it helps you to make a perfect circle and to divide your circle up into pie wedges. All right, so this thing on the inside moves. The outside needs to be held down stationary so that it doesn't scooch around because if it scooches, it messes everything up. So you need to hold it and then this, not like really mash it down hard, but if you just hold it and move it around with your pencil, you can get all kinds of cool stuff. It is endless what you can do with this thing. It saves you from using a compass and a protractor that for me are a tad tricky, a little fiddly, and honestly, I regret spending the money on them. So this was the best thing that I have found to do circles that are consistent and easy for me to do. I don't think I would carry this around with me, but what I would carry around are these. Now I started playing with it as soon as I got it. And it's a little hard to see because you need to use a pencil. So I started putting this on paper and playing around with it. So the first thing you need to learn to do is where zero is. Zero is right here. You turn zero to here. Then there are black arrows at this end and this end of the part that twirls. So you line up your black arrow on the arrow that says zero. Okay, just ignore this stuff on the side. So what you're looking for is a straight up and down line this way because this arrow should line up with 180 because that's half of a 360 degree circle. So you need the arrow to line up with this arrow and there, I'm, and I'm not using a pencil so you can see this. Let me flip this over to the back side of the paper. All right, so I got my stuff lined up. It didn't move. Ha, huh, what a shock. And then you can draw a line. See, there's slits or empty spaces in here for you to draw lines. And I'm doing this with a pen. You should do this with a pencil. Well, never mind. Let me do this with a pencil. <laughs> so you can just go inside the slit. Make sure it doesn't slip because once it slips, you've missed where perfect zero is right here in the middle because it shows you zero. See those? Zero. So here is your center. Then if you want to make different size circles, there are little tiny holes all along this side and this side. And you can put your pencil inside the hole, twirl it, and look what you got. Is that cool? I am loving this thing so much. All right, so I'm going to line up my arrow. I'm going to line up my zero right here where I poked the first little mark there. I hope I can get this perfectly straight. And then I can make another circle and space it out. Put my pencil in and then make this. Yeah, let's do another one inside here. All right, so now I've made all these circles, right? Cool, huh? So they're evenly spaced. 
right? So I'm going uh, to, ordinarily I would not take this off and on. So don't, don't keep picking it up and putting it off and on. You want it to stay in one place until you're completely finished or, or it could mess up where exact center is. It could mess up all your other stuff. So let me see if I can get this back to center. There we go. The zero, 180. All right. So you made all your little circles, but you've decided that you need for your um, artwork to be divided up into pie shapes. Don't do that, Vicki. Mm -mm. <laughs> so what you do is you rotate this. And the outside here has all the degrees. This is 360, 350, 340. You can skip 10 degrees. You can do 20 degrees. Here's 10. Let me show you what a 10 looks like. When you go to draw through this line in the middle to make your pie, be sure that you hold down the inside part because it will scoot and it'll mess your pie shape up. All right, so I did at 350, and then let me show you what 330 is because that's 20 degrees. And then 330, let's go to 300 because that'll be 30 degrees difference. So you have different ways you can divide up your pie. This is a 10 degree difference. This is 20 degrees. So this is 10, 20, 30. All right. So you can space stuff out to however you want it spaced out so that you can do things inside this. The pencil line got a little light there. So you can do inside. The whole point of this is to make beautiful things. So I've been playing around with it for a week to 10 days now, and these are all the different things that I've done with it. These are 10 degrees apart. The Helix has small circles on the inside of it. So if you need something smaller than what this, this will scoot around to, like this is as small as it will go when you put your pencil in those little holes. If you want anything smaller, then you need to move these into your circle and line up the black, um, nee, 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 nee. line up the little black arrows with the line, lines you've drawn, push your finger down on it, and then you can draw your circle. Then you can draw your circle in here, and it should be almost perfectly centered. There you go. Is that cool? I am just amazed by this. Now, if you don't want to draw anything in the middle, just erase the inside. You are going to do great things with a pencil and eraser and this. So there you go. You got those. And I can erase all these lines out of these circles here. I'm going to leave them there for now. All right. So then I just wanted to see what it would be like if I just drew, if I just put my pencil through all these little holes and turn, turned it and then went to the next one that's right down below it and turned it and so on and so forth. That's what happens when you do them concentrically with using all these little holes right here because there's holes on this side and there's holes on that side. Then I did the pie thing again and I did erase the center of this one also. You can do a bazillion different shapes. You can do a bazillion things with this. You can space stuff so it's skinny. You can make stuff so it's far apart. You can do a ton of different things. Now, there is one other cool thing that I want to show you about this helix. And that is the lines that you do in the middle don't have to all go to the center. So if you don't want this stuff in the middle, then you need to use this one here because this one does not go down to zero. It's a shorter line. Let me see if I can, sh no, it doesn't work that way. All right, so this one is a long line that goes from center all the way out. This one, if you don't want to use, let me go center, 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 where is center? If you don't want a line that goes all the way from the outside of your circle to the inside, you can move this up and down on here so that you only make a line partially through your circle of other lines. 
so you'll get a shorter circle a shorter line and you can make it as short or as long as you want it to be that's the nice thing this has thought this piece has shown you all kinds of different ways to use it all right so then we have this one where I went crazy then I did this one where it's scooted and my stuff is out of alignment be careful don't have a dog sitting close to you when you do this this one played around with this one then I did this one and it did not go well because some of the lines when I tried to use another template on top of the round ones that a template that had triangles on it when I drew it again there was a dog on the couch with me it the dog moved and my pen jigged so I'm gonna give you a tip when you have a triangle like this and something goes wrong get yourself a white signo pen I hope this is dry yeah get a white signo pen you don't even need gesso you just need to do oh this is not quite dry yet but you're gonna get the drift of it you can clean it up wait till the black ink dries and you go back over it with the white pen and it covers it up so if you're gonna photocopy any of this you don't want that weird strange line to be in there just take your white signo and then go around, or a jelly roll pen whatever you have go over the black line you don't want on there and when you photocopy it it doesn't show up all right so that's those now I'm gonna show you oh, see look this is what happens when you think you're smarter than the helix <laughs> it goes a little bit crazy all right so let me show you the others so when I got this this is the reason I bought the helix is this one in the middle here you see the distance between here and here uh where is it up there totally missing that's what I get for freehanding the inside was done with one of those plastic templates that you just lay on there and go inside the circles that's fine but this and this not so much all right so then I got the helix and I started using it and things got a little bit better this one I tried the helix and I didn't quite center this exactly but it's close enough because of the coloring that I did that it, it's not your eye isn't going oh she's wonky this one was done with the helix and a small um, template because these little circles are very small and so I used something else to do the little tiny ones but three lines out of this were done with the um, the helix and then I took a ruler and drew a line around around the um, circles on the outside which gave me my square Let's see all right this one I was fooling around with it and it's a mess then I did this one which looks much better more round so the only wonky parts really in this is how I did the outside and I wasn't happy with the triangles that were kind of wonky so I learned how to fix that but sh let me show you another one I'm sorry the pages are greasy I was eating while I was doing this all right so then this is a one I kind of used the helix and then I went over my lines with the pen black pen but I didn't do very well with it nevertheless it's still much neater than the others that I've done all right so there's that then I was testing a pen and this is the example of wonky I did not center it and there's my center right over here not even centered it's right there it's not in the middle I learned my lesson about not moving the helix around taking it off and putting it on leave it down there until you're completely finished because this is what happens when you don't do that so I was testing a pen because I needed something to fill in the black spaces and I have to tell you filling in black spaces with a micron is really fiddly but it takes forever so I wanted to use something that was black cover better black coverage and I fit you know I talked about the R2 rollerball pens 
So I wrote notes. Great for filling in black. Great black for filling in. Not good for fine line work. No. Thick lines, yes. But it bleeds and it spreads. If you go over it too, too many times, it leaves the edges fuzzy. But in order to correct the fuzzy, you could go back and kind of trim it in with a fine line pen so that the edges don't look fuzzy from using the other black pen. I don't know if you can see this, but this jets out there. So all I'm going to do is just take it and fix the triangle a little bit that way. So you can do that with some other fine line pen. Um, so the, all the black work here is that rollerball pen. Now the downside is it bleeds wicked bad. See, my center's not even in the center. It bleeds something terrible. This is just computer paper. So I was just playing around with this. All right, then I made this one. No, I did not. Let's do this one first. Then I tried, I, I like doing the sharp triangles like a flower. So let me show you on one of these how you managed to do that. So I did the, the line work on this one with a pencil in the beginning, but I finished it off with this to show how to make these. Then I went over these with a uh, number eight. Uh, I think I used a micron for that one, a number eight, which is a big fat one. All right, so in order for it to look like that, uh, this is the wrong template. Let me find one that has some finer lines on it. Let's divide it up better. Oops, I think I've drawn all over my stuff. Son of a gun. Okay, let's use this one. All right, so I wanted triangles. So let me put, let me put a line here. Center, zero, where's three, uh, where's zero? Here's zero. Zero's right here. Where's the center? There's center. Zero. Let me make sure, because I have these lines here. Move this around to zero. Line it up with my pencil marks from before. All right, so now what I'm going to do is, these are 20, zero. These are 20 degrees. No, 10, 20, 30. These are 40 degrees apart, so I want them smaller so I can show you how to make the the triangles. Remember, you have to hold this down in the middle or stuff gets wonky and it moves around. So I want to do that. Put the pencil in. Move it another 10. I did these at 10 degrees. This is not quite lined up perfectly, but it'll do for what I want. Alright, so you do every 10 if you want to do the flowered look. So you have to have an even number. Everything turns out perfectly. So if you want to do the triangles, what you do is you start, because you have this circle here, you take this and you go up the middle and then down. And then if I had another one over here, that would be helpful. So you go up and I'm going to pretend there's a line there and then you go down. That's all you do to get these peaks and valleys is you just go up and down like that. It's super duper simple. You have to pay attention to what you're doing, though. You can't have a dog sitting next to you on the couch. <laughs> so let me give you some advice because I messed this one up. I love the way it looked when it was in black and white, but I made the mistake of coloring it in before I scanned it on the scanner. So I'm disappointed that I can't... I mean, I can scan this, but it doesn't do me any good. I can use it for an example or email it to friends who want to use it, whatever. But I can't... I can't color over it over and over and over because... I colored in already, so I have to recreate this. So I did the other night, or last night, and I'll show it to you what it looks like. All right, so while I was trying to teach myself to do the helix, I did this all with the helix, and the outside is free-handed because the helix doesn't get that large. So I did everything freehand at towards the outer edge of it. Let me see how far the helix will go. There we go. So the helix only goes 
to the inside there. So what I did was I figured, well, you know, a circle's a circle. So I pressed this down, took my pencil, and then I drew on the outside of the helix. So all this stuff on the outside of the helix is all freehand. The stuff inside here was done with the circles. So look what you can do. You can go crazy. This will be photocopied and used again. I'll try to recreate this, but next time I won't put any of the black work in there so that I can do use the same design and do diff or the same um, basic framework and then do different things inside it because I don't want to keep doing this over and over and over and over. Now, if you photocopy it in pencil, remember, you cannot erase what you photocopied. So this would be strictly to use as something to learn, some, you know, to, to do the skill. And then this one I made so that it would kind of mimic this one that I messed up by coloring it in before I photocopied. So what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to recreate this again. I'm going to leave this the way it is, photocopy it. Now, remember what I told you about wonky lines? I see a wonky line in here, and I can't stand it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my white Signo, if I can get it to write, and I'm going to color in where my lines got a little crazy. Let it dry, and I may have to go back over it again, but I think that got it. So there you go. All of this is possible with just one thing. This right here and a pencil and an eraser. And the possibilities are totally endless. I don't do math, but this is the kind of math I can do. Rotate, draw a line. Rotate, draw a line. This is my speed of math. <laughs> All right, so this is it today for my creative year prompt for February is figures. And check out the Facebook group. Please like, share, and subscribe. And enjoy the other artist interpretation for this month of what figures is. All right. I will see you guys in March. Thanks. Bye.